So today I'm going to be running you through the basics of armatures. Now armatures are very good, very important, they can add that extra flair to your model without any real effort. Uh, they're really easy to do, takes five minutes and you can produce stuff like this. Armatures work on the principles of having bones inside skeletons and the skeletons mimic the skeletons that your model would have. So you can move the model around as so if it had a skeleton with bones you could pose. This doesn't make much sense but uh, you'll, you'll get the gist of it throughout the rest of the tutorial. So let's get started. We've got the model from last time, the Meowth model, and uh, if you haven't learned how to do this then I suggest you take a look at my other tutorials by clicking the link top left now. Uh, but if you have, you're going to want to open that model or any other model you want to add an armature to. Once you've done that, we're going to want to add the first bone to it. All the armatures start from one bone, that's generally put in the centre of the model. So, here we click add, and here we click armature, and here we click single bone. So we're going to hit single bone and it'll make a bone somewhere in the scene, normally where the 2D cursor is at, 3D cursor is at. Now, we're going to want to put that in the centre of our model, so we can move it around with these green, red and blue handles. Now blue handles will move it up and down, green will move it forward and backward, red will move it left and right. So, let's put it in the centre of our model. Now, immediately we hit a problem if we do this. Uh, it's gone inside, no clue where it is now, and I can't put it in the centre because I can't see it. We can fix this really easily. When you add the bone, the armature tab pops up in your properties. So, all you need to do is hit the armature tab if it's not selected, and hit X-ray and just like that you'll appear with the bone in the centre of the body. Now we can move it around but we still can't be reliable that it's in the centre because it's, it's difficult to see. We've only got this one view and it is difficult and this other view isn't helping so we can add three views very quickly and they're very good so let's do that. If we go down here we hit view, we hit toggle quad view and we get more views and they're a lot more helpful. That's because these are orthographic views instead of perspective views. Now, perspective views basically distort the image depending on how close you are to it, whereas these ones, orthographic views, do not. They are a bit small, though, and if you've got dual monitors, you might want to go down here and click View and duplicate area into New Window, where you can drag it into your other windows and make it bigger. If you don't have dual monitors, don't worry. You can still go down here and click View and toggle full screen. And now this is full screen and we can see everything a lot better. Now we want to place this bone in dead centre. Now we can do this by eye but it's, it's not very reliable and uh, it's much easier as well to hit the tab thing up here and you'll get the object properties. And if we hit zero on the x-axis it's now zeroed on the x-axis which down here is indicated as being left and right and the z one is up and down and on this view which is from the top as it says up here Y is backwards and forwards. So now it's in the dead centre of the model in that way. We can close that now by dragging it back. And we can hit tab to edit the bone. Now to add more bones to something, you just hit where you want it to be added on the, on the existing bone. So you right click it and then hit E. Just like that, your new bone will be attached to your cursor. You can move it around like that, move it up and down, forwards and backwards. But I want it up here. Now, it's like that, but it's not dead centre again, and it's a bit of a farce to go up here time and time again. So if we want to right-click that entire bone and hit the delete key on our keyboard and enter, we can just hit E again, and then hit our right mouse button to make it seemingly disappear, but it's still there. We can just use our blue handle to drag it up, and just like that, it's in the centre of the head. It's still in the centre where the other one was, but now, you know, it's a bit easier. This is all very well and good, but say you want to add something for the arms, you'd have to hit E, and then click, and then you'd have to do it again, but click on the old other bone again, then hit E, and then move it, and we don't want to do that, let's delete that one, and delete that one, because it's just not accurate. If we go to the tabby thing up here this time, and hit that, we'll get this list here, and we want to find the one under armature options that says x-axis mirror. Hit that, and now any bones we create with shift E, so that's the shift key and then press E at the same time, will be mirrored on the x-axis. Now as we said, the x-axis was left and right. So we can click that there, and we can also move it around in the other views. So we want it to be in the centre where the arms will be, and if we move this view around, like that, we can position it so it's where the arms will start. So that's kind of like his shoulder bones. It's, it's good to assimilate these with human bones as well, because 
we're familiar with them. So shift E again, let's go to his elbows now. Elbow. And then pan across here. Shift E again, let's have his wrist. And finally, they're not distinguished enough to have one for each finger, so let's shift E. And we can put one there. We can go back at any time by right clicking on any joint here and moving it up and down in this view, or left and right in this view, or forwards and backwards in this view, and we can do that on all the views. These views do not rotate. Try rotating them and nothing will happen. Only this view will rotate, so it helps you immensely. You'll understand once you try doing it. We want to move this one here, at the bottom, a bit back, because we want it over the legs. So if we move that back a bit there, still controlling the rest of the body, like so. Actually, let's move it up a bit, and we'll have some hip joints. So, shift E, and move that, click. Shift E again, move down, do his knees, click. Shift E, move down, and we want them like that. Now, your, your cursor, when you're moving them around for the first time, will be locked in the view. So you can't move it forwards and backwards in this view. You have to use this view, which is a good thing, I promise you. And we can do the rest of his feet with shift E. And now here it doesn't look like there's two, but in the other view it does. So now it's time to get working on the tail. If we uh, pan up here with the uh, shift middle button and hit E to create a single bone in this view. We can move back there if we rotate this view around so we can see what we're doing up here as well. It's always good to look at two views when you're doing something. Uh, position it down a bit with that key. E again, click. E again, click, E again. Now, cat's tails are quite flexible, which is why I'm doing several all at once. And uh, E one final time. Actually, no, E one final time, because this bit here is all one mesh. There aren't, it's all joined together, so there's, there's no point in curling it around with it, because that won't change anything. So that's the tail done there. Now, if we go up, we need to do the rest of the head. So if we click the original head joint there, uh, we're going to want to pull it up. Now, Blender chooses what's in charge of what on the model by how big the bones are. So the bigger bones you have, the more of the model it will control. Now we want to control this entire head, but unfortunately it's quite big and round. So we're going to want to create several bones to cover this. So if we do one up here with a single E, because we don't want to mirror it, uh, we'll do one back as well here, like that. And we'll do another one up like that. Now we can squash the head around, which is useful if you have a model that you want to move quite impossibly or for whatever reason. And that's pretty much it. Oh, we need to do the ears as well, so let's look at it from the front. Shift E, move that one out. Actually, I'm going to move the middle one down there as well. Uh, Shift E again, once we've selected that, to move that up there. How does it look in this? It looks good in this, I think. And I think that's pretty much it. I mean, we can move these three here all at once just by moving the neck joint that I added in there, so that's not too bad. And I think we're ready to turn this armature into a movable mesh kind of thing. So if we get rid of this big screen by hitting back to previous up here, and tab out of edit armature mode, and if we uh, hit view down here and click toggle quad view to get out of quad view, we're back here where we like it. Now if we select the armature and move it around, the model doesn't move too. That's not what we want. We want to hit the model because we want to parent it to the armature. So if we shift click the armature as well and on our keyboard hit Control P, it comes up with this list and we want it to figure out automatically what bones are related to what. So we hit with automatic weights here and it calculates it and then we get to exactly the same thing but it's different. Because if we hit the armature here, and go down here where it says object mode, and then pose mode, each bone is now individually selectable, but if we open the rotation tool down here, rotate manipulator, and we select say the arm bone here, we can move it around, and the model will move with it. If we skip into solid view here, you can see a bit better how the model will move with the arm bone. So, very useful if you're trying to position him to be sat down, for example. And this will work, of course, in the render as well. If you hit render image, you'll get something blank unless there's light on the scene. And if you hit right, render image when there's light on the scene, you'll get something like this. Now, it looks a bit distorted, but that's simply because I have low render settings so I can show you guys instantly escape out of that. And, like I said, we can move the head around like that. A bit dodgy. Move it around like that. 
And we've got this distortion up here. I'll show you how to fix that in my next tutorial, but for now I'm running out of time. So, that is how you do armatures in Blender. Really simple, really easy, really quick, and it will save you a lot of time, for example, if you have to pose him sat down. Because before you'd have to go edit mode and move everything around. But now if you want him sat down, you just add a few things like that. Let's just put that in the middle there so I'll show you guys. Just add a few bones, move the armature around in object mode to move the entire model. Pose it so that your feet aren't intersecting into anything there. And you basically have what an armature can do for you. They're so exploitable, so easy to do. Let's move his foot back a bit there. And now if we render, we'll have him sat on a plane. Easy. So easy. And uh, that's all there is to it. Uh, so if you want to download the models used in this tutorial, you can go to my website at rowstudios.co.uk. Download them here for free. They are free. Feel free to download them for free from the website. Link's in the description and on screen now. And that's it. Um, leave a comment on how you think I've done, what you think I can do next. My next one will be fixing up those dodgy armatures and tracking around in 3D space. So I guarantee you that one's interesting. Click the button somewhere on the screen now to go to that one. Until then, peace out.